What's the word, y'all? Um, let's talk about it. I'm going to preface this by saying I will probably only be talking about Bulls versus Nets today. Today was a film session day. I, I try to allocate one to two days a week to film all my main channel videos, all of that. And that was today because I saw the Bulls had a home game that started at 9 o'clock. Bet I'll be done with filming by 9, 9 o'clock. And I was, and I tuned into this game. And I, I wish I did. No, I don't miss Bulls games regardless of how the outcome is. It was a good game for two and a half quarters. 71. It was 71 to 71. A couple minutes passed, and it was like 75 to 100. I don't, I don't, well, I do know what happened. James Harden started to turn up, and Kevin Durant was supernova in the third quarter. Um, but yeah, you, you know, things, things happen. This is what I hate about social media. Um, I made a jokey joke about the Bulls in that third quarter. Like, man, they got to stop putting us on national TV because we're not built for it yet. Obvious joke considering we've won games on national TV this season, but it was just a little jokey. I know that 90% of the people that saw that tweet knew it was a joke, but I only can think about the 10% of people that thought I was serious. The Brooklyn Nets won a game, and I, I'm going to say that they have a big-time decisions to make. Um, it's crazy to think that James Harden, um, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving have only played a handful of games together. If I'm not mistaken, they're 13 and 3, or it's like 15 and 3, or 16 and 3. Regardless, their win percentage when all three of them play is really good. And this is the first time this season where they had all three of the players on the court together. Though Kyrie Irving didn't have a Kyrie Irving type night, he had an impact on this game. And it is scary. Now, this is the first win the Brooklyn Nets have had this season of a team above 600. Um, so, you know. But this is why I say that they have a, a big decision to make. Now, I'm not here playing epidemiolo epidemiologists. I'm not here to talk about the virus or vaccine. I'm not trying to talk about that. But there was something that came out um, earlier today talking about the Brooklyn Nets and how they can maybe loophole their way to having Kyrie Irving play home games. Optically, it would be really bad for the team. I'm um, considering when the, the season started, they were really um, they stood on this heel of trying to keep people safe and, and keep yada yada. And obviously things have changed, right, where they're allowing Kyrie Irving to play at away games. But there is a little bit of a, a loophole here. And this is published by NY Daily News. If Nets and NBA really want to, they can let unvaccinated Kyrie Irving play in Brooklyn for a small fine. And they continues to go on and say, hey, if you let Kyrie Irving play his first game in Brooklyn, it's a warning. Second game is $1,000. Third time is $2,000. Fourth time is $5,000. And fifth time, it's another $5,000. So they will be paying close to or a little over $5,000 every time he plays. Now, if you look deeper into this article and deeper into the rules, it says for that last time, the fifth time, it's no less than $5,000. So I guess the city of New York or I guess the state of New York could come to the Brooklyn Nets and say, hey, it's five times, but now instead of... Uh, a five thousand dollar fan. It's a ten thousand dollar fan. It's a fifteen thousand dollar fan. But there, is, there might be a loophole to have Kyrie Irving play in Brooklyn. Again, like I said, optically it might not be the best decision for them, considering where they stood at the start of the season versus now, and to completely turn uh, one eighty would maybe look bad. But they, they do have pressure on them, y'all. They do have pressure on them. Uh, Kevin Durant has been there for a few seasons. Kyrie Irving has been there for a few seasons. And now James Harden has been there for a season and some change. And they want to win a championship. There's reports the other day that the um, Daryl Morey and the 76ers are trying to make deals dealing around Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris trying to get off all of that money because they want to make a run on James Harden. They have some pressure, the Brooklyn Nets do, to win a championship. And, and since Kyrie Irving came back, a lot of people wonder, like, hmm, do you want to be the top seed if you're the Brooklyn Nets? Because if Kyrie Irving can only play away games, you go to a game seven in Brooklyn, he's not there. And obviously, when he is there, whether he's having an amazing game or not, when all three of these dudes are here, they are a super, super elite team. Even though they are 1-8 and eight versus teams over 600, I think you would be crazy to say that this team can't beat a good team in a series. I think you'd be absolutely wild, and you're lying to yourself because you know the top-end talent in itself is enough for them to be real-life contenders and real-life championship team. Today, Kevin Durant had an amazing game. James Harden made um, Dayron Sharp look like the greatest center of all time. Those are the type of impact you can get from these guys and imagine if Kyrie Irving is back on his 27 points per game 50 40 90 stuff and he's playing a series now this is what I think might happen again it's just a prediction I could be completely wrong I don't think they bring this this card out yet I feel like if they wanted to do this where Kyrie Irving is playing home games, they can just coast their way through the regular season letting Kyrie play half the games. They're already the two seed right now with Kyrie Irving not playing for a big chunk of the season where James Harden was playing terrible, not terrible, bad for his standards. Obviously, he's turned it up. Bad for his standards for a good chunk of the season. They've coasted their way to like the two seed. You know, what I think they might end up doing 
my prediction would be that they wait to the postseason. Surprise. If you wasn't planning for Kyrie Irving to play on um, this game one at home, we'll take that. We'll take that warning. Or or game two at home, we'll take that thousand dollars. Or game five. Oh, we ain't even need game five. We, we swept the first round of the playoffs. All right, so game one of the next series. We'll take that fine. So that's what I think might happen. But they have to make the decision again because optically it might not be good for the team. So they have two games at home coming up. That is tomorrow against the OKC Thunder. And then the game after that against the Pelicans. And they have four straight row games. That is the Cavs. That is the Wizards. That is the Spurs. That is the Timberwolves. And that will allow Kyrie Irving to get more PT behind him. Um, the first two games, he didn't look bad. And today he didn't score the ball amazingly. But he didn't look bad today either i mean he's obviously still in really good shape but they have that big time decision to make man and I, i'm curious to see how they decide to do these things because i really do believe that they are pressured to win this championship this season i mean we have contracts of james harden that's going to be up in this offseason carrie irvin has a option on it um a player option on it so he could potentially opt out so again there are some pressure to try to keep these guys happy or win that championship because even if James Harden decides to walk or Kyrie opts out and goes to a team where he can play a whole season regardless of the vaccination status if you win a championship it's all worth everything every trade you did everything you've done it's worth it even if you just get one championship and that's what I've been trying to explain to people for a million years let me talk about the Chicago Bulls side of things because obviously I, I have no other choice right so what, what I gotta do um a couple days ago we were going against the Dallas Mavericks and me and the homies watched a lot of these games in the party together and one thing that we were talking talking about or I mentioned to them is that good teams are able to just have elite level offense and some okay subpar defense and just win regular season games right uh, we've seen a lot of teams in NBA history be able to do that even when we were on that nine game win streak we had the number one offense in the league in that span but we had the 22nd defense now you can make an argument to me hey we're missing Alex Caruso Javante Green and today we lost Derrick Jones Jr. I hope bro it's not like out out because that would hurt our hearts we've missing some of our best defensive impactful players for sure and even during a lot of that streak we didn't have um Lonzo Ball in the court that is true but the great teams that separates the good power from the absolute great teams are the ones that have it on both sides of the floor um early in the season I mean the Bulls were a top 10 defense so I guess we just got to get healthy to get back to that point but it seems like health is not something that you're going to get to completely so you have to figure out all of the other things too you know what I'm saying not a great game for us especially when you you know, we didn't start off with a lot of nationally televised games, but we got a lot of flex action because we are the number one team in the Eastern Conference at the moment record-wise. Um, so because we don't have a, a lot of nationally televised games, people, their only interpretation of us other than looking at the box and say, oh, the Bulls beat the Pacers today or the Bulls beat the Wiz today is when we are on national TV. And that's why I made the joke, y'all. Damn, man. I'm, I'm still mad that people took that joke at face value and thought I was being serious. We team enjoy basketball around here, man, even though we was getting blown out and it was disgusting. There was like six straight possessions, it felt like, where DeMar got ripped up, Zach Levine got ripped up. We couldn't get a stop. 71 to 71 blew out to like crazy, crazy proportions. Ridiculous. I know somebody, I, I bet if I went to Twitter right now, StatMuse has put out a tweet talking about um, James Harden in the last X amount of games because bro has been hooping his butt off. And you can argue, I mean, he's not the only one, right? A lot of people that made superstar players that started off really slow that we were like, oh, man, bro, they, they got to say Luka Doncic. Um, I, I don't know how he played today. I saw that they lost. But Luka Doncic, James Harden, those guys are coming into form, man. All it takes is time. All, and they have plenty of it. It's 80-plus games of an NBA season, and you're getting ready for the playoffs. James Harden since Christmas. I told you they was going to have a tweet. 27.3 points per game. 8 rebounds, 11 assists. We'll round up for you. The real number is 10.8 assists, 45% shooting. Oh, the tweet right below that is talking about Russell Westbrook in the last three games. Um, I did watch the last minute of that game. I, that's not enough for me to dive into it and talk about the game completely. But I know everybody's talking about Russell Westbrook right now. And honestly, I was going to make a video a couple days ago. Um, the last game that they lost, I don't remember who it was against, but in a post-game interview, Russell Westbrook got me low-key sad for him bro like I, he's always been kind of a standoffish guy when it comes to the media but in this one it had a different feel to me like somebody was asking a question about him being a team point guard and he like laughed and, and like was basically denying the fact that he was a point guard he was asked what do they what did the team go from there and he stood in sight he was sat in silence for like 30 seconds before he said anything and then it says right here in the last three games nine points six points eight points and he shot 20 percent in that span and again I only watched the last minutes of this Kings game and one of the last possessions of the game is him holding the ball for 20 seconds and, and jacking up a three um 
it's it's rough out here, man. Obviously, I've said this plenty of times before, but I know there are new people coming to the channel all the time. I'm very neutral on Russell Westbrook. I'm not a Russell Westbrook stan or lover. I'm definitely not on the hater side either. I'm very neutral. I look at him the way I look at 90% of NBA players. Um, but in that moment when I watched that that post game interview, I felt bad for bro. But then again, I got to look at the history. He basically requested out of OKC. He requested out of Houston. He requested out of Washington. And well, I, I wouldn't be surprised that he's like, man, I wish I wasn't a Laker right now. I already see Laker fans coming after Russell Westbrook. And I mean, they, they blew this game, right? They lost the game to the Kings again. They split the season series with the Kings. It's not something you want to do. The Kings are the Kings are not. You understand what I'm saying? I, I will. Do I want to go back and watch this game or maybe just watch the Russell Westbrook possessions? I don't really know. Is it much to say on the January 12th game about Russell Westbrook on a team that's 500? I know this because they have LeBron and Anthony Davis and Russ that no matter what, and because they're the Lakers, no matter what's going on in their organization, um, people are going to talk about it. But, man, I wish that the spotlight weren't really on them. <laughs> I'm really one on them right now. All right, that's the end of my ramble.